Ukraine's railway workers are helping the war effort and keeping spirits high. Hi there, everyone. I'm Jeff, and this is Plain English, where we help you upgrade your English with current events and trending topics. This is the audio portion of the lesson. There's much more at plainenglish.com slash 527. JR is the producer, and he has made sure all the content is up there for you at plainenglish.com slash 527, 6 o'clock in the morning, Chicago time, every Monday and Thursday. Now, don't worry. JR doesn't wake up early to press publish. We schedule it in advance. But in case you want a jump start, that's when it comes out, 6 o'clock in the morning, Chicago time, log on, and you can be among the first to get the newest content. Coming up today, there is not a lot of good news in Ukraine, but one group of workers is serving the country heroically, and they symbolize the resilience of the Ukrainian people under impossible circumstances. You'll hear their story today. You'll also learn what it means to work around the clock. And we have a song of the week. Let's get going. Ukraine has been fighting a war for eight months. Last March, Russia began an unjustified invasion, breaching sovereign Ukrainian territory raining missiles on civilians and infrastructure, and leaving a legacy of torture and atrocity. The war is not going well for Russia, meaning that Russia is not achieving its war aims. Ukraine has recently recaptured critical provinces. Russia's military is depleted. Sanctions are making it difficult to replenish critical supplies. Both sides are said to have lost over 100,000 people to the conflict. There is not a lot of good news. But there are some people who, and this is an incredible story, they're working around the clock to keep Ukraine's people and economy moving and they're serving as an inspiration to the Ukrainian people. They are the workers of Ukraine's National Railway. Before the war started, Ukraine's population was over 43 million. In terms of land area, it's about the same size as France. The country is crisscrossed by railways, many of which were built during the Soviet era. Today, they're an essential part of Ukraine's war effort and its wartime economy. And the people who make the railways operate, the rail workers, are a symbol of hope and resilience for the Ukrainian people. Start at the beginning. In the first weeks of the war, Ukrainian railways helped evacuate 4 million people, most of whom headed west toward Poland. Lviv is the biggest city in the west, just 70 kilometers from Poland. Before the war, Lviv's train station, a gorgeous building, by the way, Lviv's main train station handled an average of 5,000 passengers a day. In the days after the war started, it was seeing 100 thousand passengers a day. Many Ukrainians packed onto trains hoping to get into Poland. The trains kept coming, packing people in and taking them west in an orderly evacuation. Ukraine also uses its railways to power its war effort, transporting soldiers, weapons, and supplies. Incredibly, the country continues to produce wheat and other commodities for export. Before, these might have gone by road. 
for safety reasons, much of that traffic has shifted to the rails. The railway adapted cars and routes in the middle of wartime to accommodate both war and export shipments. Train crew members work around the clock. Some catch just a couple of hours of sleep before going back on the job. Operators have mandatory rest for safety, but the stewards and other workers often put in 45-hour shifts. That's almost two full days. Like nurses in a hospital, the train crew members double as counselors for passengers. They listen to stories, give advice, provide information, and empathize with their fellow citizens. At night, they do their work in the dark. The lights are kept off for safety. And they do this amid danger. Russia knows all too well that Ukrainian railways are a key to the country's economy and war effort. So the railways have been a target of Russian missiles. Train crew members give passengers advice on the overnight trains. Sleep with your feet toward the window in case the train gets shelled. When Russian missiles hit critical rail infrastructure, workers jump into action, rerouting trains and beginning repairs. Ukrainian Railways employs over 200,000 people. Many workers left to join the war effort. But the director of the railways says that no workers, none, refused to do their job out of fear for their safety. The trains operate in any areas that are not controlled by Russia. I mentioned earlier that Ukraine is taking back territory that Russia had conquered earlier in the war. When that happens, Ukrainian Railways sells a commemorative tourist ticket to the reconquered territory, redeemable when service resumes. They're called Tickets to Victory. Ukraine's train workers are also on the front lines of diplomacy. Airspace over Ukraine is shut down. You can't fly to Kyiv. So when foreign dignitaries visit Kyiv for a meeting with Volodymyr Zelensky, they first fly to Poland and they take a 10-hour train ride to the capital, sometimes for just a one-hour meeting. The railways have this covered. They realize they have an unprecedented opportunity. They have the captive attention of world leaders for 10 consecutive hours. They provide them with books about Ukraine's history and culture, and they have a celebrity chef on board. Ivgen Klopotenko won Ukraine's Master Chef Television Competition in 2015, and in peacetime, he operates a restaurant in Kyiv. Now, he's the personal chef to visiting dignitaries preparing Ukrainian food for them during their train journeys. It's not just the occasional prime minister, either. Over 200 foreign dignitaries have made the trip, including American Secretary of State Anthony Blinken and Angelina Jolie, who does humanitarian visits on behalf of the UN. Klopotenko says he doesn't get much advance notice, just a text saying that someone important is visiting. I am in awe of what they are doing. I can't fathom what it's like to live in a country under attack from a foreign invader. People call railway workers Ukraine's second army, and it really does seem to be true. The fact that they have this huge national asset, this infrastructure, 
And in a space of hours, maybe days, they repurposed it to take civilians out of the country, move military equipment to the front lines, now handle exports that used to be on trucks, and the trains still follow a schedule. I am just in awe of what they are doing. So remember this too, 165 rail employees have been killed in this war. The railway workers are going to have a special, special place in the Ukrainian history books when this is over. Today, I'm going to show you what it means to work around the clock. Now, this is an easy one. You deserve a break every now and then. To work around the clock means to give extra effort and to work many, many extra hours. The image here is of someone working hard all the time as the hour and minute hands of a clock advance through a full day. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean 24 straight hours. It might mean that, but not necessarily. However, it does mean a lot of hours any time of the day or the night. Ukraine's rail workers are working around the clock to keep the trains running, to move people and material around the vast country. Now, most train and transportation systems are 24-hour operations anyway. So when I say that Ukrainian railways workers are working around the clock, I mean they are putting in a lot of extra hours at all hours of the day and night to achieve their goal. Individual people are working many, many more hours than usual. Closer to home, I can think of another person working around the clock. His name is John Ray III, and he is now the unlucky CEO of FTX, the cryptocurrency exchange that imploded in November. John Ray is working around the clock to figure out what can be salvaged from the sudden collapse of a popular crypto exchange. He has an impossible job. He's an expert in turnarounds, restructurings, and bankruptcy. That's a polite way of saying he is the person you call when a big company is in a massive amount of trouble and needs to be rescued, like immediately. So when Enron collapsed, he was the one who stepped in. And now, he says that what happened at FTX was far worse than what happened at Enron. So he has his work cut out for him to clean up the mess. Now, you can bet that he and his team are working around the clock to salvage some value for FTX customers. Now, when I say he's working around the clock, I don't know what time John Ray's alarm goes off in the morning. And I don't know what time he climbs into bed at night. Or if he even sleeps in a bed. He might sleep on the couch in an office. I don't know. It's not important. But I can tell you this. He gets up early and he works until very, very late. He is working around the clock. I think he was appointed at 4.30 in the morning. Imagine what that call was like. He's working around the clock. Our friend Elon Musk told employees at Twitter, the ones he hadn't already fired, the ones who hadn't already quit, he told the ones still at Twitter that they had to work around the clock and be hardcore if they wanted to keep working there. And a lot of Twitter employees took his invitation to quit. Many of them said it's fine to work around the clock for something you believe in. They're not afraid of hard work. But they don't want to work around the clock for an organization that's falling apart and doesn't value them. 
It's starting to snow in the U.S. I saw a story that some parts of New York State were expecting three feet of snow. Three feet of snow is a lot, even for the snowiest parts of the country. Now, when that happens, and God bless them, a lot of people work around the clock. First, you've got the people who clear the streets and the sidewalks. With a snowstorm that big, you work around the clock to clear the snow. You can't just wait for it to end and then start plowing. You have to plow the whole time. Next, you have police, firefighters, other public safety workers who respond to snow-related emergencies. They work around the clock. Utility companies work around the clock keeping the electricity on. Snow falls on power lines and can cut power. That's not safe in cold weather. So utility workers work around the clock. And television news also works around the clock. Here's what happens in a big snowstorm in the United States. Reporters, local television news reporters, stand outside and tell people not for any reason to go outside, and they do this around the clock. Today's song of the week is Better Days by Dermot Kennedy. He's an Irish singer, and he wrote this song during the pandemic. He said it's about patience, believing in a better future, no matter how bad things seem. He said he wants the song to remind people that things will improve. He's got a good voice, too. I like this one a lot. So thanks, JR. I feel like if you take JR's style of song, my style of song, and you mix them together, you might get this one. So good job this week, JR, choosing Better Days by Dermot Kennedy. And that's all for today's Plain English. Thanks so much, as always, for making Plain English part of your English learning routine. I love sharing this time with you every week. If you don't want the fun to end, remember that we produce a lot more content every week as part of the Plain English Plus membership. If you're a member, you get access to a step-by-step walkthrough video a whole page full of English quizzes and exercises, and the chance to practice working around the clock. Now, I don't mean you practice actually working around the clock. That would not be much fun. I mean, you practice using the expression work around the clock and any other English expression you learn on plain English. Now, plus members, you know what I mean. There's that special practice area below each expression, you write your own examples using the expression you learned, and I give you personalized feedback. So those are just a few of the ways that the learning continues at plainenglish.com slash 527. And if you're not yet a Plus member, you can join today in a few easy steps at plainenglish.com slash P-L-U-S. That's all for now. See you next week.